Hey guys, here we have a nice little DOS retro gaming setup. I got this thin client for just over $25 from eBay and thanks to this nifty device which is the Opel 3 LPT, we now have wonderful and authentic Yamaha Opel FM music and sound. Just like the name implies, the Opel 3 LPT will give you Yamaha Opel 3 FM music and sound over the parallel printer port. Now this device works great with old laptops, but in today's video we will use it with an older thin client. What I find interesting is that I'm surrounded by retro parts. I can build whatever machine I want with all the MIDI goodness and access to hundreds of games, but I found that I hardly play games anymore. Some of it has to do because I create content rather than consume it, but also because too much stuff gets a bit overwhelming and it's with a simple setup like this that I actually found some time to sit down and play a game for a change. I like the simplicity of this setup. It's definitely more partner friendly than a bulky desktop PC and the constraints and limited upgrade options remind me of the good old days when life was simpler and you could really engage with a single game giving it all of your attention. And here we have a closer look at the Opel 3 LPT. So this is the 25 pin connector, goes into the printer port. And at the rear, we've got a volume dial here for the integrated stereo amplifier. Here's the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can connect your speakers in here. There's a reset button and here's the mini USB port to supply power. Also included, is a 3D printed cover, so that just snaps um, on top of the unit like that. And you can still uh, press the reset button here and you have a choice of two colors, either go with black or with red. In past videos we had a look at a range of thin clients and used them to play old games. They are compact, energy efficient and you can find them readily available on places such as eBay. But we found that most thin clients do not have working sound in DOS apart from the very basic PC speaker. The thin client we are using today is the HP T5720. We have reviewed this unit in previous videos and it's a very versatile model that I can highly recommend for anyone looking into getting a thin client for retro PC games. We have a 1 GHz processor, 512 MB of RAM and 1 GB of storage. The RAM and storage can be replaced or upgraded, but for DOS gaming that's really all we need. This thin client is really flexible. You can insert a USB flash drive and the BIOS will then mount it as a hard drive D in our case. And that makes for some really easy copying for your games across to your machine. This is the back of the thin client. Here is the printer port. So we take the OPL3 LPT, just plug it in like that. And because the thin client has USB ports, we can just connect a USB to a mini USB port and supply the device with some power. And that's what the unit looks like from the back. So now we're just gonna connect the monitor and some speakers and we're gonna have a look at the software and I'll show you how you can use this device. When you first get your unit, you want to run the OPL3 test program to make sure that it functions correctly. There are two methods to use this device. Firstly is a driver and what this driver does, it will intercept all the data being sent to the Adlib FM port and redirect it to the printer port to use with the OPL3 LPT. The other method is patching the games to give them native support that has a few benefits which we will talk about very soon. The driver requires expanded memory to work. It is compatible with EMM386, QEMM as well as JEMM. The driver has a few parameters but we're just gonna run it without any options and here is the driver loaded. It requires one kilobytes of memory and you can load it into the upper memory area. And now that the driver is loaded, you can just go into your game and off we go. With the sound options, you want to use the AdLib option and let's have a look. Thank you. 
Let's have a look at some of the other command options. We can run the command again together with unload, which will remove it from memory. And then some of the other commands are, for example, OPL3. This will uh, use the OPL3 mode for stereo support. Blaster will help with uh, games that look for an actual sound blaster. It's not 100%, and there's a new driver in the works, I've been told. And there's one more option, no patch. This can improve timing at the cost of more uh, processing power. So that's something you can use, for example, with a thin client like that, which has a, a gigahertz of clock speed, plenty of power. So if you run this, we can now see it is in OPL3 mode. We have a Sound Blaster FM port at 220 um, and the patching is disabled. Now, some games do not work with the driver and require patching. I will put a link down below in the description. There's a list of games that have been tested. So, for example, Doom is one of these games. Uh, it will not run with the driver, so we need to patch it. And the program is called Add Patch, but it needs a few command options. So we have to enter dash i, followed by either the game executable or an adlib driver. In Doom, it's the executable, so we just go doom.exe, and there you go, it applies the patch. We then run the uh, setup program, where we choose Adlib for music, and either PC speaker or no sound for sound effects, and let's run the game. The latest version of the software, which has just been released recently, supports patching of scum games. So we're going to go with Fate of Atlantis. Now, this will actually work with the driver, but patching is supported. We have the adlib driver here, so we're going to patch that one. So add patch dash i and then adlib.ims. Game is now patched and we just run the game with the A option for adlib. Patching the games, I can think of three scenarios where this is interesting. Firstly, if the driver doesn't work, obviously. Then the second scenario is if you don't want to have expanded memory by patching the game and having native support. No EMS is required. And the third option is uh, performance. The driver has a little bit of a CPU overhead. So if you want to, for example, disable the CPU cache to get compatibility with old games, or you're running uh, a fairly slow 386SX or maybe a 286, then native support will give you the best performance. So what about compatibility? Pretty good. Here we have a list of games. These are the type of games I usually test with my PCI and ISA sound card reviews. All the green games, they work just fine. In brackets, I made a note when I had to patch the game. The red games didn't work. Still, this is excellent compatibility, and this is another case where we should focus on what actually works rather than uh, get upset about a handful of games that do not work. So guys, I was quite impressed with the compatibility. I expected a lot worse, to be honest, and most games I tried work just fine. And games that support the Adlib should work. You might have to patch it, and there's a uh, good resource out there with a list of games and also sound engines that can be patched. Um, we ran into a few issues with some of the newer games that look for a proper sound blaster. Here hopefully a new driver will improve the situation. In terms of sound quality, very low noise and really strong signal to drive your speakers, so that was good to see. Plus you have a volume dial so you can adjust the volume. In terms of pricing, you're looking at 53 euros. Now, this device uses SMD components, so this time there's no soldering kit. And you might think that the pricing is a little bit on the high side, but I've been uh, working with Sadako for quite a while. Um, it's all started off with the Dream Blaster S1. And what I really appreciate is that they don't do crowdfunding or Kickstarter campaigns. Um, they invest their own money and it all started with the Dream Blaster S1 and from those cells the Dream Blaster S2 and then the X2 and the X3 and all these other 
cool product. So this is definitely a company that I feel uh, should be supported because who knows what else they're gonna cook up. And there you have it guys, we checked out the OPL3 LPT, which is an excellent addition if you've got a thin client that doesn't have a DOS uh, compatible sound card, but has a printer port. And by doing so, we can turn this into a really cool DOS gaming machine. And that's it for this video guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. And thank you for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.